Good day everyone, Mr. Craft here and for this video we're going to be taking a look at a build I did some years ago. It started out just for fun but then I decided um, let's take this to the next level and let's go for total accuracy. Let's, let's try to make this as completely accurate as possible. And so the, the house that I uh, chose, I, I had done a research paper on it um, in one of my uh, classes in college, was the, uh, the House of the Mosaic Atrium in Herculaneum. And so here the first thing that you see when I'm showing you is a, a plan of that house. And so for this build, I of course looked at many, many different plans, read many different articles. Um, there was just a lot of research involved. In, uh, in trying to determine what were the proper and exact dimensions, how were the rooms decorated, and so on and so forth. Um, it didn't always happen, but it did happen enough times where I would find contradictory information. There just wasn't enough evidence to say with certainty that a room was used for this, that, or the other purpose. So in my build, there are going to be times when I'm going to take a liberty and decorate the room according to what seems fitting, uh, what seems maybe suitable for the times, or or even suitable for uh, for my tastes. And I, I'll try to to let you know when uh, when I've made one of those choices. Now before we take a look at the actual house I need to say just a few words about the Roman house in general the first thing is to note that your early Roman houses for instance the Domus Italica that we find Vitruvius describing to us in his book De Architectura is a house that's based on a plan very similar to what I'm showing you now this is the plan for an Etruscan tomb and so what we see in the rooms that are labeled C and B, so C, uh, this is, these are going to be our kelli, uh, our cells. B is going to be the falces, the entrance there. Um, e is going to be a, a greater, uh, greater hall. And then in the rooms that are labeled F, of course, on the Etruscan tomb, uh, these are going to be staging rooms as well as burial chambers and in fact there are going to be burial chambers all through this thing in fact it is a tomb after all but the uh, the Roman house is going to use a plan very similar very similar to this now these are old Roman houses and houses in Rome proper when you get outside of Rome you have to consider that those people weren't always influenced by the Etruscans so when we get into uh, Pompeii and Herculaneum, we're going to run into a lot of uh, uh, Samnites that, uh, that held those areas for quite some time. Um, there's going to be some Greek influence and so on. And I'm going to try to, uh, to show you a little uh, how, the, uh, how the house changed a little bit by the time that the house of the, uh, the Mosaic Atrium was, uh, was built. So let's uh, take a look then at the, at the build. So here we are in Minecraft. Here is an overhead shot of the House of the Mosaic Atrium. Again, I've tried to be as accurate as possible following the dimensions whereby one Minecraft block is equivalent to one meter. So if we uh, go on down here towards the, uh, towards the entrance of the house, we can, uh, we can begin. So we... Uh, Walk on into the into the house. Shut the door behind me. So the first thing that we notice is that we do have this one, two, and three different rooms that are here up at front. In the Domus Italica, this room and this room, that these areas were much bigger, and they were dedicated. They were the cells were dedicated oftentimes for uh, shops, especially if there was an opening to the street. Um, but here we're starting to see that the rooms are not big enough. Now, in fact, the rooms here should, in fact, be a little bit bigger 
but because the blocks are one meter, it was a bit hard to give the uh, proper amount of space, and so what they end up being are just really passageways, service ways. And in fact, that's what many of the uh, archaeologists thought that, that these rooms were used for. Granted, they would have been a bit bigger. Uh, this room, as opposed to going to an upstairs portion of the house, is in fact leading to a downstairs portion of the house, and I'll get to that in just a second. So we enter through the Falcase, the uh, the hallway here, and we see uh, we have some paintings on the wall, much like you would find at the uh, at the actual house of the Mosaic Atrium. We look on the floor, and we see we have the uh, the monochrome floor, uh, the black and white. Uh, black and white tiles. As we cross the threshold and enter into the atrium, we find the uh, the room which gives the name to the house. And this room is known because of the uh, mosaic floor here. Again, this is done in a in a truly uh, monochrome sense that we just have the black and white checkerboard tiles. Absolutely nothing uh, fancy or particular about it. Now, inside of an atrium. As we would expect in in most uh, Roman homes, is what we have a uh, here we have the impluvium and up above we have the compluvium, and so what this served for was a means to allow rainwater to enter in through the house, collect in a pool, and what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've added this bottom floor here this this underground sort of basement area where where the water may have been collected uh, I don't know for certain that this was here I couldn't find anything about it on the house of the mosaic atrium although several articles uh, mentioned that a, a sort of collecting pool existed in the home whereby there was a porous rock that would act as a filter to filter the rainwater as it came in and then the family could gather drinking water from the uh, from the pool down below. So let me see if I can remember how to show you what the rain oh. okay so here we have the rain coming through the compluvium so the rain is coming together and it's pouring and collecting into this impluvium, so this is where the uh, where the rain would come and then and then be collected for the uh, for the household here. As we walk through the uh, atrium, we now are going to be entering into the uh, tablinum. This is the room for the pater familias. The room, sorry, for the pater familias. Uh, we can see some of the uh, some of the different uh, personas that are placed here on the wall. I've uh, I've opted to put a uh, Maybe this is a, I don't know, the father or something of this pater familias, so someone very important to this man. Um, the uh, the tablinum went through several different stages in the Roman house. Family archives. At one point in time, it was actually just a passageway into the hortus. This house does not have a hortus, um, and in fact, it seems that this tablinum was simply used for a. A meeting room for the pater familias who would sit in this very powerful position. So you can see he has a very linear linear view looking back through the atrium, through the falcase, and he can see who would be entering into his home. And so giving him a very sort of powerful position uh, and, a, and a position, uh, at least in this room, where he could decide... Um, from whom he would receive the uh, the daily salutatio. Uh, those folks might uh, wait here in the atrium in the more public space as they uh, wait their turn to meet the pater familias. Okay, then we come into this room here. What we have first, um, I'm going to walk around in this little area here. Uh, sort of just a, 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 a colonnade that's going to go around the peristyle garden. Um, the uh, the floor was not as nicely decorated through this section of the house because it was it did not it was not the mo one of the most important sections of the of the home as as archaeologists will uh, will point out to us and instead things change when you go across this threshold here and then we see that now we have some 
some marble, white marble on the floor, we see that we have now evidently entered into a more important area, and we'll touch upon, uh, we'll see how this continues through the rest of the home momentarily. Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, peristyle garden, complete with a drainage system for any excess water. We have a water, another water feature here in the uh, center of the home. And shooting off of the peristyle garden is an etcetera where we could expect uh, the uh, the man of the house to uh, have his guests come and perhaps have sort of uh, philosophical conversations uh, with his guests as they look out over the peristyle garden. Branching off from the peristyle garden, which is a bit different from your traditional Roman house, uh, are the cubicula. The cubicula usually would branch off of the would branch off of the atrium here, but instead we have them branching off of the off of the parasol garden. And so very plainly decorated, relatively small, meant for little more than sleeping. Um, up here, I've I've simply added a, a room that that I think might have been uh, the room for the pater familias. Of course, some of the uh, the decorations here are uh, not time appropriate, uh, but they uh, I think theme appropriate at least. Uh, and so, I'll just go through here and finish up. So, see a few more a uh, few more of those rooms. There were four in total. If we come back here, uh, the evidence for this room stated that it was actually a uh, an apartment, although I couldn't find. Precisely how uh, to redecorate this room uh, appropriately. So instead, I opted to to change it slightly and make it a bit of an armory. So we have some uh, some Roman uh, some some military apparel, and of course, apparently, this individual was in the one of the Augustan legions. I also took the liberty of giving this person uh, the Pater Familias a uh, a sort of a an, another office here where he might uh, might do some. Some writing, perhaps he was a bit like uh, a bit like Pliny, and that he liked to write in his in his little home here. If we move forward, we have a room that was very likely dedicated uh, to a, or dedicated as a kitchen, and so I've tried to uh, recapture that here with the, the placing of various foods. Then this is a a very big, very important room that opens up directly off of and has a great view of the of the parasol garden and this is the triclinium so here we have the uh, the three cleaner the three couches a uh, very nicely uh, decorated room so as to entertain guests and of course the the uh, the kitchen as we saw here opens off of it so servants could very easily come in and deliver food to the to the guests of the pater familias um, here, uh, again, just another passageway, but I thought I'd make it a bit of a sort of a music room. Why not? So in case the, uh, in case the servants were to uh, provide some entertainment also for the guests, they could, uh, they could do so. Now, this section of the house was dedicated as a sort of a, a, an apartment, although an apartment more for the, uh, for the servants of the house. And so that's why you see it's a, a bit more crowded in terms of uh, sleeping arrangements too beds to a room and then they also have access to the back part of the uh, of the house here which will open up to two more uh, rooms called diurna so day rooms and then these rooms uh, so we could imagine Folks may come in here at various times of day and various seasons in order to uh, enjoy themselves and uh, perhaps take in uh, a bit of the uh, a bit of the scenery that we have available here for them. So this is the uh, the house of the uh, mosaic atrium, a a very fun build, very informative build. Uh, again, we can see that there were some some changes that were made to this house. It certainly is a house uh, because the we we're going to be opening up to uh, to an atrium from the Falques as opposed to a as opposed to a parasol. Um And we also can see that it does differ a bit from the old Roman house.
Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I thank you for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Salute.